all pramanandi. So my blessing to all, uh, and also Padma. Very good road. <laughs> and Mother Rukmini. Oh, Rohini, 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 Krishna also. So my blessing to you all, queens, all Krishna, Radhika, and Padma. Oh, Narada Rishi. <laughs> Very good. I think I bless, I am giving my blessing that you should realize these facts. Not now, but even in future. You should know and be a pure bhakti. On one fragrant full moon night, Krishna started playing on his flute. So enchanting was his flute that all the gopis ran towards him. Sensing the pride that has overcome all the gopis, Krishna deserted them, and then, suffering the pangs of separation, the gopis started weeping and enacting his meal. Seeing their deep de devotion, Krishna reappeared and danced with the gopis, delighting them. Now, we are about to sing eight verses, Rasa Tri Rashtakam, which has been written by Bilba Mangala Swamiji and Sri Krishna Karnamnatham. Angana, Angana, Mantrade, Madhavo, Madhavam,
ಚಕ್ಷುಮಿಂಧುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ಮಹಾಬದನ್ನಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರೇಮ ಪ್ರದಾಯತೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ನಮ್ನೇ ಬಹುಪ್ರತಿಷೇನಮ ಗುರವೇ ಗೌರಚಂದ್ರಾಯ ರಾಧಿಕಾಯಕಾಲಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಭಕ್ತಾಯ ತದ ಭಕ್ತ ನಮೋ ನಮ ತವೈವಾಸ್ಮಿ ತವೈವಾಸ್ಮಿ ನಯಮಿ ತಯಾಧೇ ತಂಗಮಾಚರಣೆ ಪರಮಾರಾಧ್ಯತ ಗುರು ಪಾದ ಪದ್ಮ ನಿತ್ಯ ಲೀಲಾ ಪ್ರವಿಷ್ಠ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಪಾದ ಅಷ್ಟೋತ್ತ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಪ್ರಜ್ಞಾನ ಕೇಶವ ಗೋಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಜೀ ಕೆ ಚರಣ ಕುಮಲೋ ಮೇ ಕೋಟಿ ಕೋಟಿ ಬಾರ ಶಬ್ದ ಪುಷ್ಪಾಂಜಲಿ ಅರ್ಪಿತ ಕರ್ತಪಶ್ಚಾತ್ ಮೇರೆ ಶಿಕ್ಷಾ ಗುರು ಓಂ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಪಾದ ಅಷ್ಟೋತ್ತ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಜೀ ಕೆ ಚರಣ ಮೇ ಕೋಟಿ ಕೋಟಿ ಬಾರ ದಂಡೋತ್ಪಣತಿ ಪುಷ್ಪಾಂಜಲಿ ಅರ್ಪಿತ ಕರ್ತಪಶ್ಚಾತ್ ಹಮಲೋ ಭಕ್ತಿ ತಾರತಮ್ಯ ಭಕ್ತ ತಾರತಮ್ಯ ಸಂಬಂಧ ಮೇ ಬದಲಾ ರಹೆ ಬದಲಾ ಧ್ರುವ ಜೀ ಯದ್ಯಪಿ ಕುಶಿ ದಿನ ಭಗವಾನ ಕಾ ದರ್ಶನ ಪಾಯಿ ಮನೋಕಾಮನಾ ಪೂರ್ಣ ಹೋಯಿ ಕಿಂತು ಶುದ್ಧ ಭಕ್ತ ನೇ ಸಕಾಮ ಭಕ್ತ ಪಿತಾಜಿ ಕಾ ರಾಜ್ಯ ಪಾನೆ ಕೇಳೇ ಭಗವಾನ ಕೀ ಆರಾಧನಾ ಕೀ ಭೂಮಂಡಲ ಕಾ ರಾಜ್ಯ ಪ್ರಾಪ್ತ ಕೀಸ ಹಜಾರ ವರ್ಷ ತಕ್ ರಾಜ್ಯ ಕೇ ಸ್ವರ್ಗ ವಿಮಾನ ಚಡನೆ ಪಹಲೆ ಕಾರಿ ಮೈಯಾ ಜಹಾಂ ನಹಿಂಗೇ ಕಾರಿ ಮೈಯಾ ಭೀ ಜಾ ರಹಿ ಆಗೆ ಆಗೆ ಇಸಲಿಯೆ ಬೈಕುಂಠ ಧಾಮ ಮೇ ನಹಿ ಜಾ ಸಕೆ ಗೋಲೋಕ ವೃಂದಾವನ ಕೀ ಬಹು ದೂರ ಬಾತ ಸಕಾಮ ಭಕ್ತ ಕಭಿ ನಹಿ ಜಾ ಸಕೆ ಇಸಲಿಯ ಧ್ರುವ ಜೀ ಕೋ ಶುದ್ಧ ಭಕ್ತ ರೂಪ ನೈ ಸಕಾಮ ಭಕ್ತ ಕರ್ಮ ಮಿಶ್ರ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಎಕ ತರಹ ಕರ್ಮ ಕೇ ಪೀಛೆ ಭಗವಾನ ದರ್ಶನ ಬಾದ ಮೇ ಕಾಗಾ ಗಯಾ ಕಾ ಚಿಂತಾಮಣಿ ಹಾಥ ಮೇ ಆಯಿ ಥಿ ಮೈ ಚಿಂತಾಮಣಿ ಕೋ ಫೇರ ಕರಕೆ ಕಾಚ ಕೆ ಕುಛ ಟೋಕಡೆ ಮಾಂಗ ಲಿಯ ಉಪಲಬ್ಧಿ ಕೀ ಕ್ಯೂಕಿ ನಾರದ ಜೀ ಕೆ ಶಿಷ್ಯ ಕಿಂತು ಪ್ರಹ್ಲಾದ ಮಹಾರಾಜ ಜೀ ಐಸೆ ನಹಿ ಕಲ್ ಬತಲಾ ಸ್ಕೂಲ ಜಬಾಯ ಪಾಠಶಾಲಾ ಸೇ ಪಿತಾ ಹಿರಣ್ಯ ಕಸ್ಪು ನೇ ಪೂಛಾ ತುಮನೆ ಜೋ ಪಾಠ ಪಢಾ ಉಸಮೇ ಕ್ಯಾ ತುಮನೆ ಸಚ ಸತ್ಯ ಸಮಝಾ ಅಚ್ಛಾ ಮಾನಾ ತುಮನೆ ಬತಲಾ ಕಿ ಗೃಹ ವಿಷಯ ಭೋಗ ಕೋ ಛೋಡ ಕರ ಬನ್ ಮೇ ಜಾ ಕರ 
अर्थात साधुओं के संग में जाकर के भजन करना ही जीवन का श्रेष्ठ फल है संसार में विषयों को भोगना ये तो सुकर कुकर भी सभी भोगते हैं और इसके लिए रूपक के द्वारा उन्होंने बतलाया किस प्रकार से संसार कुप है और कैसे उससे रक्षा हो सकती है यह सुनकर के ही नकश को बहुत क्रोधित हुआ और कहा संडा मर्ग से क्या तुमने लोगों ने सिखलाया हमने तो सिखलाया नहीं ये कैसे बोलता है ओ मालूम होता है कि कोई भक्त आ जाता है और चुपके से इससे मिल करके इसको ये सब ज्ञान देता है ठीक है इसको ले जाओ कोई साधु संत इसके निकट में आने नहीं पाए इसे फिर पढ़ा करके लाओ फिर गए पढ़ाया और क्या पढ़ाया क्या शाम दाम दंड भेद प्रजा शासन कैसे की जाती है ये सब चीजें सिखला है फिर जब प्रहलाद महाराज जी आए तो फिर पूछा तुमने अब तक जो पढ़ा उसका सार क्या है अत्या तब उन्होंने कहा श्रवणम कीर्तनम विष्णु स्मरणम पाद सीवनम अर्चनम वंदनम दक्षात्म निवेदनम इति पुनसार्थिता भक्ति नौ भक्ति से नवलखना क्रीत भगवती अद्धा तन्मन्यधीत मुक्त जो पहले आत्मनिवेदन कर भगवान के चरणों में आत्मसमर्पण करेगा पहले तो भगवान मिलेंगे नहीं तो गुरु के चरणों में आत्मसमर्पण करके तब फिर भगवान के चरणों में उनको सेवक भगवान भगवान ही किंतु सेवक भगवान समझ करके आत्मसमर्पण करेगा और तब यदि वो समर्ण कीर्तन स्मरण करे बिना समर्पण किए करेगा तो नहीं फल होगा पहले आत्मसमर्पण करे और तब भगवान के लिए ही भगवान की कथा ही लीला कथा गुण कीर्तन सुने तो ये भक्ति होगी और यही जीवन का जीवों का मूल कर्तव्य है सुनते ही फिर निकपस को एकदम क्रोध से लाल हो गया गोदी से फेंक दिया कहा सीखा अरे सन्नाबर तुमने सीखा है अभी तुमको दंड देता हूं वो डर के मारे बोले जैसे प्रभु हमने नहीं सीखला तो कैसे सीखा यह बालक की स्वभाव ही वृत्ति है किसी ने नहीं सीखला है किंतु यह ऐसा ही कहता है आप इसे पूछे ये कहा से सीखा और फिर नकस्वर ने क्रोधित होकर के बालक प्रहलाद से पूछा ऐ कहा से सीखा ओ So last night we were hearing the beginning of the five different levels of devotion, beginning with Gyan Bhakti Pralad Bhakti. But before the level of Gyan Bhakti, there is the devotee Druva. Druva is a Satyam Bhakti. He's the devotee, but he's worshiping with some material motives. Even though he only practiced austerities for a few months, and he's told the Supreme Lord. And he's desired to fulfill. Still, he cannot be called a pure devotee, a sudha bhakta. Therefore, the Lord fulfilled his desires because he desired to become king. For thirty-six thousand years, he ruled the empire. But he was at the time of death. What happened? One special vehicle came from the heavenly planets to take him to the higher world. At that time, he said, "I need. Without my mother, I cannot go." Therefore, the Vishnu Lord said, "Your mother has already preceded you. Therefore, still we have attachment to his mother." Then, what to speak of Goloka Vrindavan? He could not even achieve by Kunta. Therefore, he is called a Karma Mishra Bhakti. He is doing devotion, but that devotion is mixed with desires to fulfill his own ends, his own means. Then, he himself admitted this after having danced the Lord Narayan. He said, "Alas." I have been cheated. I was searching for a pink diamond, and I was satisfied with a piece of broken glass. Therefore, Pallad Maharaj, who is a Gyanibhakta, he is not at all like this. He is much superior. 
He has no trace of material desire in him. When he returned from school, that time his father asked him, while well, I was only five years old, he sat on his lap, what's the best thing you learned? And Prahlad Maharaj said, immediately, one who completely abandons the material life, which is like a dark hole, who gives up the disease of material enjoyment, and who performs, who takes the association of the devotees, that person is the topmost. Because even animals have material enjoyment of eating, sleeping, making, and defending. Therefore, family life, or material life, is some sort of a dark well of suffering. Rani Kasipu, when he heard this, he became angry, and he called the teachers, Sunday Namaka. Why are you teaching my son like this? What nonsense you are teaching him? Then the two Brahmanas, the sons of Sukhachari, became afraid. We are not teaching him this at all. Then Hari Kasipu can understand, there must be some Hare Krishna devotee is coming in disguise, some Vaishnava. And he's teaching him secretly about devotion. Then we said, take him back to school and teach him properly. Therefore, the son of the market taught him all types of materialistic topics, like Sam, Dan, Danda, and Dev. Different types, how to control people by giving bribes, how to control people by fear, how to cause division between two parties, all these type of politics they taught him. But Prahlad Maharaj heard of one even going out the other. He never gave any attention. Then when he returned from school, after some time, his father asked him again, what did you learn? Immediately Prahlad Maharaj said, Sravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Parasevanam, Atanam, Bhandanam, Dasyam, Sakyam, Atmanavedanam, Iti Pumsavita, Vishnu, Bhaktisya, Navalakshadam, Kriti, Bhagavati, Ada, Adita, Yuta, Uttamam. Oh, Father, the best thing I learned is one should Iti Pumsavita, Vishnu, one should completely surrender to the Lord. And after, after surrendering to the Lord, one should serve Him by performing the nine leaves of devotion, hearing about Him, chanting about Him, remembering Him, offering prayers, becoming His friend, worshipping Him, becoming His servant, and completely surrendering one's very self to Him. Without surrender at the feet of the Lord, then one cannot practice real devotion. But the Lord is very far, therefore one should first surrender completely to the spiritual master, and then under the guidance of Guru, one should surrender to the Lord himself. Prabhupada said, this is devotion, this is the topmost goal of life, the real duty of the soul. Hearing this, Yerani Kasapur was completely disgusted. He threw Prabhupada off his lap and shouted to the teachers, Why are you teaching this nonsense to my boy? And the teacher said, we never taught him this. And how he knows all this? He said, it appears to be natural. We have not, we have not taught him these things. Then, they told that you can ask Prahlad himself. And they, then Hari Nakaspu told him, Prahlad Maharaj, what he told. After the that, teachers, they, go on. The teachers took Prahlad Maharaj. And they asked him, why, where have you learned all these things from? You are worshipping the enemy, Vishnu. And Prahlad laughed. What are you, I can make you understand, because you are still seeing duality of friend and enemy. Prahlad said, before I heard this from my guru, that such things exist, that now I am seeing directly. The Prahlad Maharaj gave some wonderful instructions. Matirna Krishna, Paratamas Matova, Mithi Abhipagyate, Taught to the boys in the absence of those who are attached to material enjoyment, much speaks mind or intelligence or heart. Those persons who absorb the material enjoyment, they have Adanta Gobir, who is a Tamta Mishram. They have uncontrolled senses, and their uncontrolled senses drive them towards a hellish condition. Therefore, they cannot understand, they cannot attach their minds to the heart of the Lord. And if our senses, like the eyes, are always going towards form, ears are always trying to hear some nice thing, tongue is always tired to taste many, many things, then how one can serve the Lord? One will be completely distracted. You cannot understand the service of the Lord because your senses are uncontrolled. Therefore, no matter how much we instruct you, or you hear the instructions of others, or by your own endeavors, your mind cannot become fixed at the feet of Sri Krishna, 
Puna Puna Sadika Tavinanam. You simply are chewing the chew. Guruma has gave a nice example of chewing the chew. Just like the parents put so much force on the child, you should marry, you should marry, you should, but they got married and they're not happy. Their parents have married, but they have also died and suffered. Their parents have just like someone is chewing chewing gum, they spit it out, and someone else picks it up. And he chews it, there's no taste, he chews it, he chews it, he spits it out and gives it to his children. They chew it, this is called chewing the chew. I mean, our forefathers, their forefathers have all tried the same thing, but they are not achieved. Like it. dogs. Uh, like Rio says, there's a dog, especially in India. And after great endeavor, he found a bone. That bone was completely dry. And he was chewing, chewing, and because that bone was so hard, it was cutting his gums. And the dog was sucking his own blood. And he thought, my God, this bone is very delicious. <laughs> He's drinking himself, he cannot understand. There are a whole pack of other dogs, they saw, he's got a bone, we don't have, they began chasing him. And all the other dogs began pounding him, biting him, and the dog was running, running, and 50 dogs were chasing him. <laughs> and finally the dog realized, the cause of all my suffering is this bone. Therefore, he spat it up, and then immediately all the other dogs left him, he felt peace and happiness. But then one other dog, he picked up the bone, he began running. And all 50 dogs began chasing him. So this is what you're in life. As long as you think something is mine, then the dog means the other people in this world, the tax agents, our children, our wife. <laughs> <laughs> and as soon as someone speaks up the boat, then he feels relief and peace. So Pallad Maharaj gave these instructions. Mathiri Nikrishne. At a second day slow. Not the But you cannot understand because you are a sadhu. Because for your sadhu, you are not the body of the Lord, therefore you cannot understand the real meaning of the scriptures. Because Adavante Chatsi Matyacha Harisabhi Triki. If you look at all the Veda, the Ramayana, all the Puranas, all the Vedic scriptures, there is only one thing in the beginning, in the middle, and the end, that is the glories of the Supreme Person. But people who are not the bodies of the Supreme Lord, they always take the wrong meaning or some external meaning. Vahirati Maninas. Because they consider things of this world to be important, they cannot understand the real meaning of the scriptures. Instead, they take some opposite meaning. Especially Bhakti Siddhartha Sajwari Tantra, he told one nice history. There was one Brahman, and he was a very learned scholar, but he was not devotee of the Lord. Therefore, he was very puffed up, very proud. So he came to one village, and the villager said, Pandaji, be very careful, don't go to the next village, because there is one tiger. That tiger will kill you. And that Pandit laughed, ha ha ha, foolish villagers don't know Sanskrit. Sanskrit tiger means Vyagra. Therefore, why I should be scared of a Vyagra? And according to his Sanskrit grammar, he made gra. Gra means to kiss, to embrace. Therefore, uh, I will go to the forest and that tiger will smell me. <laughs> well, what's the problem? According to his Sanskrit grammar, he went in the forest and the tiger took his life. Therefore, people, they make so much endeavor, according to their word, jadari, and mental ability, to take some exterior meaning from the scriptures. But the meaning is very clear. <laughs> <laughs> and when the tiger was taking his life, then the pundit realized, oh, Jagra also means tiger. <laughs> Therefore, those who are not devoted to the Lord, how they can understand the scriptures? Because the scriptures are the Lord himself in the form of sound. Therefore, the scriptures are revealed by devotion, not by mundane scholarship. But what you can understand, you are not devotees of the Lord. And Sandra Michael was shocked. You saying, we cannot understand? Why we cannot understand? Then he said, Naisa Matis Tava Urukunamani, Sri Satam Yat Anata Bhagavad, Sri Satam Yat Parabhajyogi, Rajyogi Sekhan Miskinsin Asya Yabhan and Iti Yabha. Such wonderful instructions of Quran. All Sandra and Maka, they are the sons of Sukhacharya, great learned persons. But you cannot understand why. You have never surrendered yourself to the food dust of a pure devotee who is free from all material attachment. So therefore, when the pure devotee comes, what do the intelligent persons do? They bow their head and they put in the, the foot dust of such a person on their head. Why? 
For like what I've said, that person who has no material affiliation, who is completely absorbed in remembrance and the service of Radha Krishna, you touch their feet and put your foot, their feet down on your head, then your mind will also become like that. But you have not seen it when you kill Guru, even though they are vastly learned persons, therefore your minds can never be attached to the world. They were hearing this, Rani Kasipu became most furious. He said, you think you know everything? I don't know anything. I also perform great austerities. I am also a very learned person. I am also very wealthy. He became angry in order this Pallad. He is like a thorn tree in a forest of sandalwood. Just like to cut down a sandalwood tree, you need an axe. Therefore, this Vishnu, he is the axe. And this Pallad, he is the handle. He will cut down the sandalwood forest of the demons. Therefore, better to kill him. Therefore, he ordered his demons, put this Pallad to death. Therefore, Prahlad Maharaj, he was completely fearless. He was not like us. Oh, Krishna, save us. No. That is also a desire for your own enjoyment. Krishna, Krishna Maharaja, K. Krishna Raja Maharaja. Krishna wants to kill me, no one can save me. Krishna wants to save me, no one can kill me. Therefore, Prahlad is simply absorbed in remembrance of the Lord. There were the nine limbs of devotion. Prahlad Maharaj, he is the guru of Smaranam Bhakti, constantly thinking of Krishna, of Vishnu. There were the demons, they threw him in fire, they threw him in ice, they threw him off mountains, they fed him to the snakes, fed him to tigers, they threw him under the feet of elephants, they threw stones on him, they tried to cut him with weapons, but Prahlad Maharaj was completely unaffected, because he is pure devotee, always protected by the hands of the Lord. There were her who became disappointed, his enthusiasm was crushed. See, this boy's power is unlimited. Even I cannot do anything. Therefore, son of the market, I said to Hrani Kachapu, don't worry, Baba, we'll take care of everything. Then they took the Lord Maharaj back to school. They said, he is like a young boy, like a green piece of bamboo. Sometimes when it says people over 50, they come, they cannot practice devotion. Oh, okay, you're 60. <laughs> People are 55 and are very happy. <laughs> but they're like old piece of bamboo. You try and little bend them, then great. But green bamboo, and they bend very easily. You can make into any shape. If they say, he is young boy, Shinta Makoro, he's got Tikka Demi, we'll make him okay. Then I took him again to school and began teaching him all types of... Oh, my father will come. And very soon he will change. My father, Sukhacharya, the guru of the demons, he will come and he will give instruction to Pallad. He will change Pallad Maharaj. Therefore, they took him back to school. Pallad Maharaj never disrespected anyone. That is one point. He was very calm, quiet, very good boy. The teachers loved him so much. They were son of the had to go out and do some puja or something. Therefore, they put Pallad Maharaj here in charge of the school as monitors. Oh. Yo. Magyana Sivanandasya Janandana Sabakya Chakshatvan Viritam Yena Tasma E Sri Pradayana Vansha Kalpa Karupasya Kripa Sindhu Taevacha Patitanam Pavanityo Vaishnavi Pyonamana First of all, I offer my humble obeisances on you to thanks to the Lord of Sita and the Lord of Purdue. On Vishnu Pada Paramahamsa Priya Kachari Ashtrakata Sixteen of Bhakti Vedanta Srimanayan Goswami Manas. And I offer my humble obeisances on you to thanks to all the Acharyas in our Guru Varga, Rupa Nurvara Varga. And also I offer my humble obeisances to all the Vidami Sanyasis, all the Vaishnavas, Vaishnavis, guests, mothers, sisters, and brothers who are present. Sri Gurudev has ordered me to speak about the teachings of Palam Maharas to his classmates, students. I am also qualified to speak like our Tritandi Sanyasis, but I have been hearing again and again from Sri Gurudev for so many years. So I'll try to speak something if anything is not complete. 
please add what I am missing. <laughs> I think Guru is from from Sri Guru Dayan Vaishnavas. So, Prahlad Maharaj, he was, as we heard from Sri Patamada Maharaj and Sri Guru Dayan, and yesterday also we heard from Sri Patamada Maharaj, how his ideal character was there. Sri Guru Dayan said, this is Kyani Bhakta. He sees his beloved Lord everywhere. He doesn't become disturbed in any situation. Even if his father, his teachers, they are angry with him, they try to disturb him, they try to punish him, they try to beat him, his father tried to kill him. Yeah, in so many ways, the love always remained very peaceful. Why? Because he saw that my Lord is everywhere, he will protect me under any circumstances. Then we learned how he gave his instructions to his father. His father was a very learned person. He knew all the Vedas. He knew Atma Tattva. He knew everything. Why he was not qualified to accept Bhakti? Because he has made the goal of his life to enjoy this world. We may be very learned. We may know all the Vedas. But if we have no love for Krishna, then no love for Vaishnavas, no love for Guru, meaning that we cannot surrender ourselves to the lotus feet of Guru Dev, then all our learning is zero. Yeah. We will be our attempts to be happy, to be successful in our life will be completely baffled. We will not attain success. Yeah. So the Lord, again and again he reminded his father that you are not able to understand yeah, how to be happy because you have made a vow to attain happiness in this world by enjoying sense gratification. Building very opulent mansions, enjoying with the opposite sex, drinking liquor, and crushing anyone who comes in front of me. And this was the motivation of Hiranyakashipu. And this was being taught also to Prahlad and all his fellow students. So Prahlad, after being harassed by his father, again he went to school. And the teachers, Chandra and Marco said, don't worry, we will take care of him. Our father is coming, yeah. We will reform this boy. He's still very young and he can be reformed. As we heard from Shippa Dhamma and Maras. If you're young, you can still be reformed. But we all know that Prahlad Maras for 60,000 years, in the womb of his mother, he heard the glories of pure bhakti from his Guru Maharaj, Sri Narada Rishi, uh, in the ashram of Narada Rishi. So, Pranat, he was not to be, he was way over 55 years, yeah? he was 60,000 years hearing the glories of pure bhakti. So, he, Pranat Maharaj, he was in the school with his students, and Samara Marka said, listen, we have some, some duties to perform. Pallad, you've been very nice, and you look after all the students. So Pallad was thinking, this is golden chance. Yeah. Let him go, and I will try to reform my classmates. So he stood up after Samara Marka left, and he told his fellow students, now listen very carefully. I'm going to tell you something. Kovaran Akshayat Prakyo Dharmam Bhagavad Kamiha Dhulla Dhamma Nushya Dhamma Tat Api Adruham Arpadam Pralatmanas was telling, when we are very young, then we should apply our intelligence. To do what? To engage at once in Bhakti. The voice of service to the Supreme Lord. Why is that? Yeah. Why not we can do it later on in life? First we can enjoy, make money, be happy in this world. Follow, as we heard, we are now the example of our parents, our great parents, yeah, our grand grand grandparents, how they were married, had children, worked hard. And enjoy in this world. Yeah. What were they happy? We just heard it. 
Sri Padamana was explained very nicely, it is like chewing the tube. Anybody is not happy, they have children, they encourage the children to also get married. For what? To be miserable like them. What is the teaching there? We just heard it. This is not the meaning of human life. The Lord was telling here very carefully, right from the beginning, the tender age of childhood, we should engage in activities to develop property. Yeah. Why is that? Yeah. Because the human life is very, very rare. There are 8,400,000 different species of life. And out of them, the human life is very, very, very rare. We have come to this human life, form of life after traveling and enjoying in many, many different species. Finally we have arrived. And what are we doing? The same. As all the other living entities are doing in the other species. Fighting, like cats and dogs, trying to enjoy sense gratification. And we have heard, it's not working. Why people are divorcing? They didn't start their marriage with the idea that they would, they would have a divorce, did they? No? All want to be happy? But it's not working. Why? Because the aim and object of the life is to perform devotional service to Sri Krishna under the guidance of a bona fide spiritual master. No matter what learning we have accrued, if we don't accept the guidance of a pure, Sadhguru, a pure devotee of Krishna, and we attain, we attempt to be in the association of saintly persons, our bhakti will not develop. So, Prahlad was telling his schoolmates, now, at once, let's stop all this play. Yeah? His friends were telling him, the students, let's play, play uh, Prahlad, let's have fun. Yeah. No, 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 no. Now we should. Here's something, I'm going to tell you something most valuable. Yeah. This human form of life, although temporary, it is most valuable. Why? Because in this human form of life, we can attain the shelter of Sri Krishna. By engaging in devotional service, under the guidance of a Sadhguru, very easily we can progress. Then, students were asking, but well, we can do that when we are older. Yeah. At the end of life, we'll engage in bhakti. This whole life we will look after so many things, enjoy the objects of the senses, yeah? and then at the end of life, we'll perform bhakti. Then Prama said, Listen, how long will you live? Maybe a hundred years. Especially nowadays, will anyone? Does anyone know anyone in the family who is hundred years? Who has family members? Yeah. I don't think anyone, even nowadays, attains that age. Very rare. Very rare. Suppose you become 100 years old. What happens? 50 years. What do we do? How 100 years? Sleeping. Yeah. We waste 50 years. 50 years left. Yeah. Out of those 50 years, what do we need to do? Yeah. If we live 100 years, 20 years, 25 years, we'll need to study, to get a good profession, you know, to get a job. Then the next half, 25 to 40 years, out of which half would we already waste sleeping. Yeah. We have to engage in hard work to maintain family. Then when we grow old, what happens? We need to stay, we need so many things in order to go forward. We can't really remember anything valuable. Yeah? Moreover, we have to always be reminded about the good old days that we had when we were young, about the grandchildren, they will come sit in our lap, say, Mommy, Grandmommy, give me some dollars. Yeah? <laughs> so our whole life will be like that. Yeah? No time for bhakti. So Prahlad at once start, just now, don't play, don't waste your time. Yeah. And why Prahlad is telling this? Not only for his 
fellow students, yeah, so that we can repeat this message through our times, to remind each other that don't waste our time. Whatever we are, take advantage of the association of the bodies. Surrender your everything, your possessions, your heart, your energy, onto the lotus feet of the pure Guru to Sarah. This is Sarv Guru. Sarv the Guru, without any inhibition. And give your everything, what you possess, to Guru. And then serve Krishna, meditate Krishna. First Guru, and by His mercy too, Krishna. So this Pranam was studying to his fellow students, and we are so fortunate that we can hear these instructions, and that we have a bona fide spiritual master, and that we can surrender to the bona fide spiritual master of everything, our heart, our energy, of all activities, under the guidance of Sri Guru. How perfectly we have heard this in the last few days. Anna sanyam jana karmari anavritam. Anupadiyana Krishna Rishyanam Bhakti Uttama. Sri Vadev presents this definition of pure bhakti. And here we see the example of Sri Purana And as we continue our lectures, we will hear how this shloka can be applied at any stage in our own life. Yeah? As Purana was completely absorbed in always remembering his Supreme Lord. And he was not afraid of anything. He was able to tolerate the greatest, horrendous yeah, crimes performed by his father, his own father. And still, he did not blame his father. Yeah? He did not protest. Why? Because he was completely absorbed in remembering his Lord, his supreme worshipable Lord. Yeah? Uh, thank you. Hare Krishna. Wonderful. <laughs> अब वे लोग जितने असुर बालक थे दैत्य दानवों के लड़के उन्होंने कहा जो तुम जो आदेश हो गए वैसा ही हम चलेंगे और अच्छा तो हमारे साथ में कीर्तन करो बस उन्होंने कीर्तन करना आरंभ किया हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे के पास में पहुंचा अरे वो तो सब बालक प्रहलाद के साथ में मिलकर के भगवान का नाम विष्णु का ही नाम कीर्तन कर रहे हैं बस वो क्रोधित होकर के वहीं से आया अब चुप करो साइलेंट बी साइलेंट प्रहलाद तुमको तनिक भी है डर नहीं मुझसे लगता सारा संसार हमारे हमसे डरता है थरथर कांपता है देवता लोग स्वर्ग छोड़ करके भाग गए कोई भी देवता सामने नहीं आते और तुम हमसे डरते नहीं हो क्यों नहीं डरते 
प्रभु इसलिए नहीं डरता पिताजी कि मैं सर्वत्र ही भगवान का दर्शन करता हूँ फिर डर का किस बात का ओ तेरा भगवान है तो जरूर है कहा है ऐसा कोई चीज नहीं है कोई पदार्थ नहीं है खड़ग खम्भ में सर्वत्र ओत प्रोत है सर्वत्र है तो मुझे तो नहीं दिखता नहीं दिखता है इस खम्भे में है है जरूर है अच्छा तो देखता बस एक मुस्ति का घात मारा और भयंकर शब्द हुआ कैसा शब्द हुआ खम्भ से निकला कैसा उसके जितने वरदान है सब वरदानों का कटिंग करता हुआ उपेक्षा करता हुआ दिन न रात संध्या समय कोई वर्ष के अंदर नहीं लीपीय ऊपर आकाश में नहीं पृथ्वी पर नहीं दिल्ली पर अपने घुटनों पर पटक दिया और किसी अस्त्र से शस्त्र से नहीं अपने नाखूनों से ही इस प्रकार से चीर करके उसकी नाड़ी भाड़ी निकाल करके ले लिया और उनकी जटाओं से आग नकली निकलने लगी सब लोग डर गए उधर में ब्रह्मा जी शंकर जी थे लक्ष्मी जी भी आकर के देख रही थी ब्रह्मा जी ने लक्ष्मी जी से कहा अरे आप तो उनकी प्रियतमा हो तुम जल्दी से जाओ शांत करो कहे आज मैं नहीं जा सकती शंकर जी भी नहीं आए अंत में ब्रह्मा जी ने प्रहलाद महाराज जी को बेटे तुम जाओ और उनके क्रोध को शांत करो जैसे ही प्रहलाद महाराज गए उनकी गोदी में कूद करके बैठ गए और निसिंह देव के आंख एकदम शांत हो गए आंखों से आंसुओं की धारा बहने लगी बेटा मुझे आने में देर हुई तुम हमें क्षमा कर और इसके बदले में हमसे वरदान मांगो प्रहलाद महाराज कहा जी मैं बनिया का तो बेटा नहीं जो आपसे भक्ति करूं और उसके बदले में कुछ मांगू यदि वरदान मांगने की हमारी कोई इच्छा है तो ये निष्ठा को दूर कर दो कजर नहीं फिर भी तो हमारे पिताजी ने आपके प्रति और भक्तों के प्रति अपराध किया है उनकी सदगति हो और तुम्हारे जैसे कुल में उत्पन्न होने से तुम्हारे एक ही पीढ़ी के माता पिता का उद्धार हो गया उसमें उनका भी हो गया यदि मध्यम अधिकारी रहेगा तो चौदह पीढ़ियों का उनके माता पिता का उद्धार हो जाएगा और कनिष्ठ वैष्णव भी जो भगवान का नाम करना आरंभ किया गुरु जी से हरि नाम दीक्षा लेकर उसके सात पीढ़ी के माता पिता धार उनके लिए मत चिंता करो और कुछ मांगो जब प्रभु यही देना है तो यही दीजिए संसार के जीवों का सारा कष्ट लेकर के मैं जन्म जन्मांतर भोगू और हमारा जो पुण्य है उसके द्वारा इन लोगों का सदगति हो जाए ये संसार से छुटकारा पा जाए भगवान ने कहा जी बेटा इतना तो होना मुश्किल है किंतु तो ऐसा होगा जो हमारी तुम्हारी कथाओं को सुनेगा वो भवसागर से आना से ही पार होकर के मुझे प्राप्त होगा ये बल ये प्रहलाद महाराज जी ज्ञानी भक्त थे माने क्या वे भगवान को अपने इष्ट देव को सर्वत्र देखते थे सभी के अंदर में और भगवान में सबको देखते थे वो जानते थे कि इन्हीं से जगत की सृष्टि हुई है ये जगत का पालन करते हैं इनको भूख नहीं है प्यास नहीं है वो थकते नहीं है आखिर सेवा किस तरह से करेंगे थकने पर पैर दबाएंगे भूख लगने पर उनको कुछ खाने के लिए देंगे प्यास लगने पर उनको पानी देंगे तो तो उनको तो कुछ है नहीं उनकी केवल सेवा नहीं कुछ नहीं हाँ जोड़ करके बस यही प्रार्थना इसलिए ये अपने अम्बरीश जैसे अपने समस्त इंद्रियों से भगवान की सेवा करते थे
उनको भूख लगती है तो उनको भोग भी निवेदन करते थे उनके मंदिर को धोते थे उनके दबाते थे चरणों को इस तरह से वाणी से सब समय उनकी कथा कानों से उनकी कथाओं को सुनते थे नाक से उनके चरणों में जो भगवान के चरणों में तुलसी दी गई है चंदन उसको अग्रहण करते थे पैरों से भगवान के धाम में वृंदावन में चारों तरफ में परिक्रमा करते थे इस तरह से अपने ग्यारह इंद्रियों को ही भगवान के चरणों में नियुक्त कर दिया था इसलिए ये श्रेष्ठ है उनसे भी उनसे भी श्रेष्ठ ये तो सिद्ध है साधक है हनुमान जी क्या है और थोड़ा सा उनके संबंध में भी कहा जाए और श्याम रानी यू कैन अम्बरीश Then they all agreed and said, "As you or order us, we will do that only." Therefore, Pallad Maharaj, un, under the guidance of Pallad Maharaj, all the boys began kirtan: Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Such a noise came from the school. When that noise went in the ears of Rani Kashipu, he was most disappointed. Then, when he came running and grabbed Pallad Maharaj and said, "You don't fear me." Even the demigods don't come before me. They are so much afraid. But only you defy me. You are always talking of Bhagwan, a supreme person who is all pervading and all powerful. But I did not see him. And Pallad Maharaj said, "Father, maybe you need to change your eyeglasses. <laughs> only by prema bhakti you can see him. Is he everywhere? Yes. Is he in this pillar, supporting the palace of Rani Kashipu?" Pallad Maharaj said, "Yes, Father, he is there also." So, in order to make the words of Pallad Maharaj true, when the Rani Kashipu struck the pillar with his fist, then came a mighty roar, which we tried to imitate. A mighty roar came from the pillar, and out from that pillar came a wonderful incarnation of God called Bhagwan Sri Narasimha Dev. Jai Singha Bhagwan Ki, Jai Maharaj Ki. Because, as you may recall, Rani Kashipu had received many benedictions from Brahma. He would not be killed in the daytime or the nighttime. Therefore, Lord Narayana appeared at dusk, not daytime or nighttime. He could not be killed inside or outside. Therefore, Lord Narayana took him on his lap at the doorway. Doorway is not inside or outside. He could not be killed on the ground or in the sky. Therefore, Rani Kashipu took him on that. Bhagwan Narayana took him on his lap because the lap is not on the ground nor is it on the sky. He could not be killed by anything living or dead or by any weapon. And Bhagwan Narayana killed him by his fingernails because fingernail is not living, is not dead, is also not a weapon. He could could not be killed by any creation or anything created by Lord Brahma. But the Supreme Lord is not created by Brahma. He is the creator of Brahma himself. He could not be killed in 12 months of the year. Therefore, the Sri Lanka killed him on a leap year. <laughs> Therefore, with a roar, he bifurcated his stomach, took out his intestines, wrapped them around his neck. Blood was. He could not be killed by any man or any beast. Therefore, the Lord appeared in a form which was half man, half by half beast. Therefore, astonishing form. He finished trying to catch the food, took his intestines as a gallon, threw the body on the floor. And was roaring ferociously. Even fire was coming from his head. All the demigods were shaking. Then Brahmaji, they prayed to Lakshmi, ladies first. You are very dear of the Lord, beloved of the Lord. You should go and pacify him. But Rani, uh, Lakshmi Devi, she was shaking. She could not go. Shankar also, he could not go. And well, finally, Brahmaji prayed to Pralad, you can go. And without any fear at all, Pralad Maharaj jumped on the lap of Mr. Nidhi. And the Shingadev began weeping and said, "Oh, my son, I am very sorry. I came late. Please forgive me. Please choose a benediction." The old Pradhan said, "I am not a businessman. I am doing some service for you, and I will take something. I am not that type of person. Therefore, you must have seen something in me which made you ask for me to take a benediction. Therefore, if there is any desire in me, please take that away." 
And already, then lo and behold, they said, "You have no material desire, but for my benefit, you should take a benediction." Then Prahlad Maharaj said, "My father committed many offenses to you and to the devotees. Please forgive him." Then Bhagawan Singh had said, "What to speak of you, Prahlad? A person who achieves pure devotion, they liberate twenty-one generations of their forefathers. Someone who becomes a middle-class devotee, they liberate fourteen generations of their forefathers." And even a new devotee who takes initiation from Guru and in a proper way begins the process of hearing and chanting. They liberate seven forefathers. Therefore, your father is already delivered. Therefore, choose a benediction. Therefore, Prahlad Maharaj, so kind, he said, "I want a benediction. I will take the sins of all living entities in the universe, and they will go to the supreme abode, and I will stand in this world and suffer on their behalf." Then the Sri Dev wept and said, "That even I cannot do such a." He said, "That is a very difficult thing for even for me to do, but I will give the benediction. Anyone who hears this discussion between you and me, they will achieve the supreme destination." Prahlad Maharaj, please. Therefore, Prahlad Maharaj, he is called the Jnani Bhakta. He sees the supreme Lord everywhere and everything within the supreme Lord. If we understand the Supreme Lord creates and maintains everything, therefore He has no hunger. Someone who has no hunger, how can He feed them? Difficult proposal. He has no thirst. How can He give someone water, milk, anything? He is never tired because He has a spiritual body. How can you massage Him or do anything? You cannot give Him a bed. Cannot massage Him. If a Prahlad understood, my Lord is like that. No hunger, no thirst, no tiredness. Therefore, Prahlad Maharaj, he never tried to do any service to the Lord, only he remembered Him. Therefore, superior to Him, superior to the Gyani Bhakta, is the Sudha Bhakta of, like Ambarish Maharaj. Even though Ambarish Maharaj is a sadhak, he is a practicing devotee. He is not perfect like Prahlad Maharaj, but still he is superior to Prahlad Maharaj because he engages in all the eleven senses in service. So I am under Krishna Padmanabh in there. He uses his mind to always. Think of the feet of Krishna. But some see by Krishna Gunanu Vandana. He used his mouth to always chant and discuss about Krishna. He used his ears to always hear the topics of Krishna. He used his hands, even though he was the king of India. He used his hands to clean Mandira Mahajana, Karo Hari Mandira Mahajana. He used his hands to clean the temple. He used his eyes to see the forms of the Lord in the temples. He used his body to embrace. Devotees in affection. He used his nose to smell the flowers and tulsi that's offered to the Lord. He would smell them. He used his tongue to chant the name and to accept the food remnants offered to the Lord. That is called prasadam. Even he used his legs to walk to the holy places. It's like everyone coming to the temple. They are walking here or driving. Therefore, that is also using your legs in the service of the Lord.、Um, what else? Eleven senses. All these jnanjya, kamjya, everything he used, engaged in the service of the Lord. Therefore, he is superior even to a jnani bhakti, like jnani bhakti like Prahlad Maharaj. Therefore, jnani bhakti superior to him as Amrish Maharaj, who is a sudha bhakti, and superior to him as a prani bhakti like Hanuman. Therefore, we'll hear from Samani Devi the glories of Hanuman and how. No, Amrish Maharaj. But in brief, in ten minutes, you should finish. Only ten minutes. Oh, my dear, 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 श्रीमद भागवत को आकर के पुष्प देकर के भी प्रणाम इत्यादि करेंगे और उनकी अंत में आरती First, he dis- he said at- yesterday that there are five kinds of、uh, pure devotees, Uttama Bhaktas, and he's speaking about Dhruva Maharaj, but he's not on that level because he had material desire. 
Then he discussed Pralag Maharaj, who has uh, who is a Maha Bhagwat and has full worship and faith without any material desires and worshiping the Lord. But because he knows that he is the Supreme Lord, he can engage in the service of glorifying with his tongue and remembering and hearing. But he feels no need to engage in direct service. Whereas Maharaj Amarish, Sabar Mani Krishna, Padara Vindayo, he's always engaged with all of his senses in the service of the Lord. Gurudev explained how he's serving the deity externally, and because he's in Baba Bhakta, he's a Baba Bhakta, he's not uh, in the lower levels of uh, devotion like us, but he's a sadhik of Baba Bhakti. Therefore, he's also engaged internally in serving the Lord. Living in Vrindavan, he's going to all the holy places and meditating on the beautiful pastimes of the Lord in Vrindavan. So Maharaj Amarish is very famous for his making his whole kingdom Krishna conscious. And also, he's a great follower of Akadasi. Whenever Gurudev glorifies Akadasi, he always does it in conjunction with Maharaj Amarish. Even though he was a great king, he never considered his opulence as important. He had unlimited opulences and unlimited treasury, but he considered it just like an uh, insignificant stone or as solid as a dream. He didn't give it any importance, but he gave his devotional service importance and he gave his following of Akadasi importance. He would fast on the day before Akadasi and on Akadasi. So he had been fasting for three days and three nights, and now it was time for him almost to uh, take pardon. Pardon means that according to the type of fast I'm doing, I take something to break the fast. If I've taken fruits and vegetables, then I must break with grains, and if I've taken nothing, then I don't have to break it with grains. I can break it with something less. So the time of pardon was coming, when all of a sudden, he was visited by a great, powerful uh, rishi named uh, Brahmagyani, named Dravasa Muni. Dravasa Muni is actually a pure devotee of Krishna, so great that he actually is able to enter Vrindavan and associate with the coward boys and even the gopis. But he likes to play the part of the bad guy in order to glorify the devotees. So he took the part of a very angry, potentially angry Rishi, who was very proud and was so much false ego and was always concerned about getting his own um, respect. So he came to the house, to the palace of Maharaj Ambarish, and Maharaj Ambarish greeted him, offered him so much respect, and offered him some prashadam. So Maharaj. Uh, Dravasa Rishi said, yes, I will take some, but first I must take some a bath in the Jamuna nearby. So he went to take bath, and because he was a very powerful mystic yogi, he was able to see things in his meditation that was going on around. So he saw the following, that the time of Paran was coming, and Maharaj Amrish became very much in anxiety. He thought, there's no way that I can eat anything before my guest eats. But if I don't take pardon, then I have not properly followed the codice, and I won't get the fruit, the full fruit of a codice. If I offend the Brahmana, then surely I'll go to hell, because he's a very powerful mystic Brahmana. But if I offend the codice, then even if I'm in heaven, I'll be miserable without bhakti, because Ekadasi is the mother of bhakti. And even if I'm in hell, I'll be close to my Lord, because I've followed Ekadasi, and Ekadasi has given me this devotion. So he decided that I must follow Ekadasi, but at the same time, I'll try not to offend the Rishi. So he discussed with the, his brahmanas, because all good kings in Vedic culture, they always consulted the Brahmanas so that their kingdom will be under the guidance of 
or spiritual personalities for the welfare of all their citizens. But ultimately, it was his decision what to do, and they just confirmed it. He thought, I'll take water, because if I've had nothing, then according to Shastra, water is sufficient. And he didn't take ordinary water. He took the Charanamrita that had bathed the Lord's body and the Lord's feet. And he took some, just one drop of Charanamrita. So meanwhile, in the Jamuna River, Dravasa Rishi is meditating and seeing, oh, what an offensive king. I'm a great Brahmana, and he's just a low-class Chakriya, the servant of the Brahmana, and then he ate before me. So he came there very, very angry, and he was chastising him as being so offensive. But he wasn't satisfied just by his anger. So he ripped out a piece of his dreadlock hair, and he threw it on the floor. And all of a sudden, because of his great mystic powers, out of that hair came a giant fire demoness. And that fire demoness, just as powerful as the fire of devastation, came running at Maharaj Ambarish. So what did Maharaj Ambarish do? Because he's always fully absorbed in the Lord and his pastimes in Vrindavan, and his palace was even in Mahavan, right, in Vrindavan. So he was simply meditating on the pastimes of the Lord with folded hands, and tears were flowing from his eyes, and he wasn't at all afraid. But Krishna had already given his disc as the protector of Maharaj Amrish and all pure devotees. So immediately, the Lord threw his discus, and that disc burnt up. I don't know how it happened, but how you can burn fire. But he burned that fire demon to ashes, and then he began pursuing Durvasa Rishi. So Durvasa Rishi, who was considering himself such a great, powerful personality with all mystic powers, he became petrified. Whereas from that fire demoness, Maharaj Ambarish, only a Chakriya, a householder with children, and so much responsibility, he had his hands folded in complete fearlessness. So the um, Chakra began pursuing very, very close, but not touching him. And he ran because he was a mystic yogi. He could go under the water, in the sky, throughout the universe. And he reached uh, Brahma Loka and Shiva Loka. He was so powerful. But both of them told him that how can we go against the will of the Supreme Personality of Godhead? We're all under the control of time, and we're completely under the control of the Supreme Lord. So if this is his desire, we certainly can save you. Best if you go to Vishnu himself. So, Dravasa Rishi ran with the um, Sudarshan Chakra just behind him, and he reached the Vaikuntha planet in this material world. And he came to Vishnu and fell down at his feet and begged for mercy. What kind of mercy? Please save me from the heat of this chakra. I'm about to die. So the Lord said, save you? I consider that by you trying to kill my devotee, I consider that you trying to kill me, and you want me to save you? My devotees are always living in my heart because they know nothing but me, and I know nothing but my devotees. So they're living in my heart, and I'm living in their heart. So this is an offense to me. No, I will not save you. So he said, but he committed an offense to me, and I'm great Brahman. So the Lord advised, he didn't commit any offense. He was just taking the Charanamrita so that he could complete his vow of devotion to me. And you're just worried about yourself and you're offensive to my devotees. You should know that knowledge and austerity, which is generally a good thing, becomes a destroyer of the person who misuses it. So you have so much austerity. You became so powerful, and you have so much knowledge, you're able to see what Maharaj Ambrish is doing, and you're able to control time and so many other mystic powers, and yet because you're misusing it against my devotee, you yourself are now going to be destroyed unless you go and beg pardon from my devotee. So in the meantime, this whole thing took a whole year. And in the meantime, for that entire year, Maharaj Ambrish had been completely fasting for the whole year, except taking a couple of drops of water. So you might say, well, look how many ecstasies he missed. 
missed all those parents. So Gurudev replied that he's actually transcendental and uh, not having to follow the rules and regulations. He did that initially just because to show his pastime. But otherwise he's entranced and absorbed. So he fasted for one whole year and during that year he was praying to Sudarshan Chakra who is the Lord's own personal weapon who is the controller of time and space cause and effect and he prayed to please not harm this um, Brahman. Finally he said, if I've performed any good devotional pious activities please let me use that that you will cool off and not burn this Brahmana. So because of that, because of that prayer and simultaneously Dravasa Muni had reached the lotus feet of Maharaj Amrish and fell at his feet and grabbed onto his feet and said, please save me. So this all happened at the same time and uh, Maharaj Amrish said, yes, immediately. Take all the results of my pious activities and be delivered. So Dravasa Rishi then understood. Of course, as stated before, he was always a pure devotee. And that's why Gurudev was saying, that's why Sudarshan Chakra, although almost touching him and would have instantly burned him to ashes, never touched him because he himself was a great devotee and only performed his pastime to glorify Maharaj Ambarish and to glorify Akadasi. So in his pastime, he realized the greatness of uh, Maharaj Ambarish. Maharaj Ambarish offered him very wonderful sumptuous prasadam, which he took and then told Maharaj Ambarish, you take it too. And then he went off into the skyways singing the glories of Maharaj Ambarish. So we can see that Maharaj Ambarish, although not on the platform of Siddha, not uh, having attained his Siddhadeya, he was situated in Baba Bhakti and therefore went into trance and served internally and externally engaged all of his senses, feeling that I must serve my Lord, just like our Prabhupada when he installed Radha and Krishna in Los Angeles oh, in 1968. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Oh, here's Jenny. We have one announcement for everyone that tomorrow there any some more devotees have requested to receive initiation from Srila Gurudev. So there will be one more last opportunity tomorrow morning. Uh, for those persons and other persons who are also deciding, uh, to, they will have to be at the house of Damodar Prabhu at just before 9 o'clock in the morning. And they will have to be fully bathed and uh, with Tilakam and also some offering of fruits and flowers and some monetary Lakshmi offering. And then after that uh, ceremony for initiation, here at about 10 o'clock, the devotees should come back here by at least by 10.30 and there's going to be the final fire jagya. All devotees who received initiation this week should attend that fire jagya, especially those who received second initiation, Diksha. They should come here for that fire jagya ceremony. The address is 201 Tamaki Drive, Mission Bay, Auckland, Brazil. Anyone who wants to receive initiation, they should approach one of the senior devotees in our Sangha here uh, and have their authorization and give their names and details to uh, to them, which will be given to uh, uh, Shripad Pradhanath Prabhu and Radha Maharaj, the secretaries of the Yeah, They cannot just simply show up at the house and say that they want initiation. They have to approach one of the devotees here, the senior devotees who know them and can recommend them. And here's one more announcement from Shabrani Didi. One very quick announcement on behalf of Jiggle Kishore Prabhu. I don't want to waste time. No, it's just one second. Uh, because Gurudev has glorified uh, Guru Thakta so much and the importance of it, Jiggle Kishore Prabhu is uh, donating a whole stack of these Gurudev Thakta books and lasting relationships of, uh, uh, from Gurudev's lectures. 
And you're all welcome to three copies after the argument. It will be last day tomorrow of Gurudev's Katha according to our scripture. In, at the end of our study and at the end of Katha, all listeners and all students must go to Acharya and offer their Swatha Pushpa. So tomorrow we are here, it's the last day, so everyone is requested to offer their Swatha Pushpa. It may be a dollar, it may be a million, it may be a flower, it may be a fruit. So please be prepared tomorrow and come with whatever you can bring and whatever. According to scripture, one must donate his best to Guru. So please come tomorrow with your preparation, with uh, Dakshana fruit and flowers. And we'll do Bhagavad Arti and then we'll worship Acharya Guru and we'll get blessing. Jamuradha Ki Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. 